very warm welcome to Evensong on this the second Sunday of Advent whether we're worshipping here in church or online. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefit that we have received at his hand. To set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open the eyes, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye. Pointed for this evening, Psalm 40 and the first 12 verses. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. My talk hath been of thy truth and of thy salvation. I have not kept back thy loving mercy and truth from the great congregation. Draw not thou thy mercy from me, O Lord. 
Let thy loving kindness and thy truth always preserve me. For innumerable Amen. troubles are come about me. My sins have taken such hold upon me that I am not able to look up. Yea, they are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart hath failed me. O Lord, let it be thy pleasure to deliver me. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to rebuke that wish me evil. Let them be desolate and rewarded with shame. That say unto me, Fie upon thee, fie upon thee. Let all those that seek thee be joyful and glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say always, The Lord be praised. As for me, I am poor and needy. But the Lord careth for me. Thou art my helper and redeemer. Make load no long tarry, O my God. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Ghost, Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and ever shall, shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> he beginneth the first verse of the twenty second chapter of the first book of Kings. For three years Aram and Israel continued without war, but in the third year King Jehoshaphat of Judah came down to the king of Israel. The king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us, yet we are doing nothing to take it out of the hand of the king of Aram? He said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to battle at Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I am as you are. My people are your people, my horses are your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, Inquire first for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred of them, and said to them, Shall I go to battle against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? They said, Go up, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, there is, is there no other prophet of the Lord here, of whom we may inquire? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is still one other by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Micaiah, son of Nimla, but I hate him, for he never prophesies anything favourable about me, but only disaster. Jehoshaphat said, Let the king not say such a thing. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, son of Nimla. Now the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were sitting on their thrones arrayed in their robes at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, son of Kenana, made for himself horns of iron, and he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying the same, and saying, Go up to... Go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the words of the prophets with one accord are favourable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak favourably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. When he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we refrain? He answered him, Go up and triumph, the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that you would not prophesy prophecy of anything favourable about me, but only disaster? Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, with all the hosts of heaven, standing beside him to the right and to the left of him. And the Lord said, Who will entice up Ahab, so that he may go up and fall? Ramoth Gilead. And one said one thing, 
and another said another, until a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, saying, I will entice him. How? The Lord asked him. He replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then the Lord said, You are to entice him, and you shall succeed. Go out and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these your prophets. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kenana, came up to Micaiah, slapped him on the cheek, and said, Which way did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Micaiah replied, You will find out on that day when you go in to hide in an inner chamber. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him on reduced rations of bread and water until I come in peace. Micaiah said, If you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Here, you peoples, all of you. Here ended the first lesson. soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the fourth verse of the fifteenth chapter of the Epistle to the Romans. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the Lord, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the true of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. 
And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here I get the second lesson. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Satisfaction of thy Son, our Lord, 
to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light on our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer. Pray, o Lord, that you may bring in your kingdom with justice and mercy. We pray that your justice and mercy may reign in your world. Be with the peoples of Ukraine this night, the peoples of Israel, Palestine and Gaza. Be with those who will spend this night living in fear because of unjust government. Help each and every one of us to put our hope in your one true righteous government, ruled by the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognise him in the breaking of the bread. Be with us here in our Advent journey at All Saints Carsholton. Bless all those who will attend any service here during this season of Advent. Help all of us to prepare our hearts and minds to meet you in your coming kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, that you may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen. We pray for those known to us who are suffering at the moment, Lord. We pray for all those who have no one to pray for. We know that you know them and you are with them this night. And for that we give you thanks, O Lord. Be with each of us in our struggles in life, and be with each of us in all of our joys and celebrations as well. Lord, in thy mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray that the light of your coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Be with all those this night who are in hospices, preparing for their death. those who will die unexpectedly this night. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Pray, Lord, that with all the saints in light, we may, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Be with us here in our mission and outreach to the people of Karsholta. Help us to be a beacon of light by the ponds. Lord, in thy mercy, hear, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. So we conclude by saying together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
The notices for this week are very uh, self-explanatory. In the notice sheet, there are still uh, paper copies available in church if you want to pick one up, or have a read of it either on uh, Facebook or on the parish website. Just one or two things to draw to your attention. A couple of weeks ago, we had our Thanksgiving Sunday. Huge thanks to those who have signed up uh, to donate on a regular monthly basis either through standing order or through the parish giving scheme, and to those who have increased their giving. Uh, if you are yet to do any of that, um, we do warmly encourage you to prayerfully and con carefully consider doing so. Um, we have a number of school carol services in this week, so there will be a little bit of disruption to the church being open, um, but it is good to have uh, so many young people passing through our doors at this time. Next Saturday, of course, someone is getting married at half past twelve at St John the Divine, Kennington. If you have signed up uh, to go to Father Daniel's wedding on the coach and you are yet to pay Marion, um, please do so ASAP. Um, either contact her or do it online, do a bank transfer and let her know, but she does need the money as soon as possible this week, please. And if you haven't done so yet uh, and you would like to do so, there is a card to sign for Daniel and Charlene here in church. And again, either have a word with me or with Marion in the office. Next Sunday, um, we have the Bishop of Croydon with us in the morning, so there'll just be the one mass at half past ten. If you're able to come and welcome Bishop Rosemary on her first visit to All Saints, please do so. And then in the evening, instead of Evensong, the candlelit procession of Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols, which will be followed by mulled wine and mince pies. Looking a little bit further ahead, on the 23rd of uh, December at two o'clock, we have our Chris Dingle making factory. Uh, we've got a fair number to make, so if you're able to come along, uh, it's quite fun, and the more hands, uh, the quicker it's done. That's half past, that's two o'clock on the 23rd of December here in church. And the Christingle services themselves, the Cribben Christingle, at three o'clock and four o'clock on Christmas Eve, and those are the only services where you need to book a place. Three o'clock is very nearly full and four o'clock is getting there, so if you are still to book a place, please do so as soon as possible through the parish website. Those are all the notices, and so we stand now for the dismissal. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us bless the 